path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Level up. Let's go. Sanctuary Church, come on. Let's stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Who's ready to level up this season? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Man, that last song that they just sang right now, that got me stirred up. That song got me stirred up. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. I know that word is for somebody right now. I don't know what, what your season looks like. I don't know what your life looks like, but I'm telling you right now, God is always working. He's at the beginning, he's at the end. He's the author and the finisher of your story. So even right now, you're looking at your situation and you're like, man, God, I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this. And God is telling you, you don't have to worry about it because I'm in it. I'm in the boat with you. And since I'm in the boat with you, I am working, working. Come on, make some noise for everything God is doing. Even if you don't see it, he's working. Even if you can't feel it, he is working. Man, I'm reminded of times in my life where there, there, like there were times in the middle of the night. I remember uh, our, our oldest son, he was crying. He was like three years old and he's just crying, crying, screaming at night, screaming at night. And it was causing so much stress between me and my wife. And we were just so frustrated. And I remember just crying out, Jesus, please do something. There was times where our son just wasn't even eating at night. Every time he, he took a bottle, he would puke. He would just puke, puke, puke. And we would just start laying our hands on him. And instantly God was working. God was working. And what I'm telling you is, what I'm telling you is in that moment, I may not be able to see what he's doing. I may not be able to feel it, but I just know the moment that we put Jesus's name in a situation, he is working. He is working. Amen. 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 I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. Today's going to be a good day. Um, if everyone can stand, if you're physically able, we're going to read the word of God real quick. Thank you to my online family that's joining us. I don't know if you're watching this in real time or if you're watching this at a later time, but I believe God has a word for every single person. We're, we're wrapping up our last weekend of the Level Up series that I uh, mean, Eddie, we're honored enough to, to even lead this. I just want to give a moment and give a shout out to our lead pastor, Pastor Jay, who's in the building today, who's in the building I just, I'm going to take this moment and, and just say, like, if it wasn't for Pastor Jay reaching out to us, um, we wouldn't be here right now. And I remember the call that I got back in 2020 from another friend who reached out to us. And um, he called me and said, hey, there's this church in, in Orange County that's looking for um, a music guy, a guy that does worship. Are you interested? And I was like, yeah, no, negative. Nope, not me. And by the way, first of all, let me say this. For everyone that's watching my feet, yes, I'm really at the edge of the stage, but it's okay. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fall. Some of you guys are like really loose and tight. He's like, oh my gosh, he's going to fall. It's okay. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fall. I do a lot of squats. So the leg, the leg strength is there. All right. Um, so I remember when Pastor Jay called me and um, um, I remember telling him, no, I'm, I'm not interested. I, I've gone through too much church hurt. And when I say church hurt, I just want to make sure I'm, I clarify that church hurt. It's, it's not, a lot of times it's not the pastors it's not even God it's people right because people are messed up and what happens is we identify some way someone treated us and we say that church hurt me and when I say church hurt it wasn't God God didn't hurt me matter of fact I was never people would tell me say hey man you're church hopping all the time how do how how am I church hopping if I'm the church there's no there's I just I just left your business I left your organization so I'm saying that to say because of some organizations and businesses that I was a part of, you know, I went through a lot of hurt. And this is the church that became a sanctuary for us. We got healed here. We were restored here. And I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, here's what's funny is that I, I will never forget, I will never forget, I was about 16 and there was a, a minister who prophesied a word over me and he said, one day you're going to be standing in front of hundreds, thousands of people, you're going to be leading people into worship At, under the sound of your voice, people are going to get saved. And I, and I, I remember thinking like, hmm. That's weird. Like, if you can't tell, I have a stuttering issue. I had stuttering my whole entire life. I went to speech therapy. I could not get a sentence out. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, I'm standing here because God was working. God was working. I remember when the guy told me, he said, you're going to stand on platforms and you're going to speak and minister to people. And I remember thinking like, I remember thinking like, how? 
that's what I was thinking. And I'm standing here before you telling that God is always working. He is always working. And here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying is I never saw him changing my stutter. I never felt him doing it. I just knew that he was working. And I stand here before you today, church, as someone who has gone through the hands of God. And if he could do it for me, if he, if he can turn situations around and restore things for me, he could do it for you. He could do it for you. Amen. 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 If you're physically able, put your hand on somebody's shoulder or hold somebody's hand real quick. Just, just something. Just, just something. Uh, I want to go ahead and say and apologize for the people who didn't wear lotion and your hands are mad rough. And people are just like, man, this guy's hand is ripping my shirt right now. I got a hole in my shirt because this guy's head. You got to wear lotion. Like so I said in the last gathering, like people say, man, Pierre, how's your face so smooth? Lots and lots of lotion. Lots and lots of lotion. Four times a day I apply it in the morning and evening. As much as I'm praying, as much as I'm applying lotion to my body, right? I got a little uh, uh, endorsement with Nivea and Vaseline. Um, and so uh, I'm not joking. Uh, okay. I forgot you guys are touching people. So let's do this real quick for us wonderful people, family, even those that are joining online right now. If you have someone that's around you, if you're listening to this in the car, lay your hand on someone's hand real quick. Because today, what we're going to do is we're going to come as a body and we're going to yoke ourselves equally, right? We're going to yoke. And when, we, and when we say yoke, yoke talks about it's uniting, it's hitching, it's associating with the right people. And today, we're going to declare that we're going to join each other on the right path, on the straight path that God has marked out for us. And we're going to go out on the other side together. Amen. So with your eyes closed, with your hands touching someone right now, repeat after me and say, Jesus, our hearts are open. Our minds are alert. Our phones are on do not disturb. And we are ready to receive. We are ready to guard up, lift our eyes up, shut up, straight up, and level up. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead and grab your seats. Grab your seats. Thank you, guys. So as you know, we've been in a series uh, titled Level Up, and this is a series of wisdom. This is a series of us discussing the tools and the things that we need that God has put out for us to be able to live properly. And we're, we're reading out of the book of Proverbs. And the thing about Proverbs is it's a lot of information. But you know what? You take this information, and if you're able to receive it as revelation, I mean, you will see miracles in your life. This is not entertainment. I'm going to say this right now. This is not entertainment because we all know this, right? Unapplied information is nothing but just entertainment, right? right? It's like watching Shark Tank, and you're like, oh, my gosh. I just learned so much. I mean, I'm not going to do none of it, but I just learned so much. It's just entertainment, right? But have you ever watched something or read something on Instagram and Facebook, and you read it, you said, wow, this makes a lot of sense. I'm going to apply this. It's no longer just entertainment. And so it's revelation, and that's what we're doing today. So if you have your Bibles, um, let's go ahead and dig in. I only have 36 pages, so it's going to be really smooth, really smooth. Um, turn to the book of Proverbs if you have a Bible with you. If you have an app, you go ahead and do that too as well. I'm reading out of the New, New Living Translation. So Proverbs chapter 4. So what we know about this chapter is this chapter, first of all, starts off with encouraging. Uh, this is Solomon talking to his sons, and he's encouraging his sons saying, well, if you're going to do anything, first of all, seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Guard your heart, right? He says to watch your mouth. We talked about this. Eddie talked about it the first week about guarding your heart and covering your heart with the breastplate of righteousness, basically living right. If you're living right, then you don't have to worry about harm coming your way because when harm come, comes your way, if you're living right and you're calling on the name of Jesus, then Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. And so that's guarding your heart with righteousness, walking the right path. Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about watching your mouth. Um, 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 staying away from corrupt speech and perverse talk. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And it reads, mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that word safe in a little bit because what, what I, 
I want to go ahead and set it up right now so that we're not confused by the word safe. Safe doesn't mean playing it safe. Safe doesn't mean like the children game, like when they're playing around and they have these bases and they have these little areas. And if they're able to jump over here, they're safe. If they're over here, they're not safe. This is not that type of safe. This is safe talking about um, standing on the name of the Lord. Right. We talked about in Psalms. I just said it just a minute ago, how the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And when the righteous run to it, they are. Okay, four people know it. That's great. That's great. You're going to learn the word today. You're going to learn the word. They are saved. Verse 27, it says, don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Father, I just thank you for this word today. Lord, we just thank you, God, that, that you've given us this privilege to just gather here in your name. And, Father, I pray for every single ear that's listening, Lord, that we will be good ground, God, as your word falls down on us. Lord, I just lift up um, every single word that comes out of my mouth. Lord, anything that doesn't come from you, God, I just eject it right now in the name of Jesus. If it's not from your spirit, if it's not from your heart, we don't want it, God. Will you speak to us today in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. What I love about this, this, this phrase here is as Solomon is talking and he's saying, mark out a straight path for your life. You know, he wasn't talking about going left. He's not talking about going right, you know. And, and what's funny is right now we're living in a world where it's encouraging us to go left, right? You know, there's some of us that are the left wing, the right wing. But here Solomon is talking and he's saying, actually, mark out a straight path path for your life straight path um in the chapter before that he's talking about saying in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path one translation says that he will make your path straight he will make your path straight you know and as we continue to read I'm thinking about the word path and I think about okay here's a few things that I want to share with us today church the first thing that I want to share as I'm reading this and he's saying mark out a straight path the very first thing is wow he's saying Make a decision to choose the way that you want to go. Pick the path. When we look at the word path, it's, it's a way that was formed. It's something, it's a trail that was either beaten or put together by feet or even by animal. If any of you have ever had um, uh, animals in your house or like rats and stuff like that, um, you know, you can walk through your basement. Some of you guys laughing because you're just like, whoa, how did he know? You're walking and you can find the rat trail, Right? It's not this thing that is pretty. It's not this thing that we use bulldozers and tractors to put together. It was just a path that something or someone walked on or people walked on enough to where a path was made clear. If you went on a hike, I know a lot of us live in California right now. For those that are watching in Florida, all my Florida people, I'm sure there's trails there somewhere by some riverbank. But out here in California, as we go on these trails, some of these trails, they weren't put together by shovels. Or by trucks, they were put together by people who has taken the path. And if you lead the path and you follow the trail, it will take you to your destination. So when Solomon is saying, mark out a straight path, he's saying, this, this is the path that you want to take. A way, a path, a trail that may have been even beaten together by feet. People stomped on it enough. And so it's a narrow walk. It's a route. It's a course. It's a track along something. Like, for example... Let's say a path of a hurricane or a train, right? That, that's a path. You know, a hurricane is funny, too, because I'm from Florida, and you guys know this. So Florida, we can actually track the path of a hurricane, right? We're tracking it for weeks. It's just weeks. Like out here in California, you guys have hurricanes, and it's just like, um, or not hurricanes. You guys have uh, earthquakes, earthquakes, right? And it just catches you off guard. It's just in the middle of the night, you just start feeling the shaking. It's just like, oh, there's a, oh there it is, right there. Oh, it's, it's what happened right there. The first time it happened to me, when we first moved out here, I didn't know about it until two days. I keep hearing people say category this and 4.2, 2.7. I'm like, what are these numbers they saying? You guys know I'm not good with my decimals. I had no idea what they were saying. And I realized they were grading uh, uh, earthquakes. It just caught you off guard, right? There's no way to track an earthquake. But in Florida, I mean, we've... <laughs> we be tracking these earthquakes or, or these hurricanes for weeks, talking to people like, hey, you guys heard about that hurricane that's coming? Yeah, you guys heard about it? Yeah, it's in Puerto Rico right now. Yeah, they're tracking it. It's saying it's going by 100 miles an hour, so it'll probably hit Key, Key West probably by next Tuesday. So what you guys going to do? You guys going to evacuate or what you going to do? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we might. You guys want to carpool for it? Because we've been tracking it. And so, well, they said by the time it hits Miami, it might go down a little bit, go down to Category 2. Okay, so we'll fill it out. We're going to track it a little bit more and see. That's how we track 
These hurricanes, for those of you that never heard of them, that's, that's the beauty. I like hurricanes over the earthquakes, right? Because we get to decide whether we want to leave or not or ride it out, you know? You ride it out. You ride out the track. So uh, uh, a path, right? It's a course. It's even a path can also be a course of action or conduct or procedure. Like, for example, you've heard this before, the path of righteousness it's a procedure. It's a conduct. It's not just like, hey, I'm walking the path of righteousness. No, here's what I want to say. What does that look like? Right? Because a lot of us, man, I'm just walking the path of righteousness. I'm just following Jesus. Okay, like, what does that look like? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's the path of righteousness. Spell righteousness. I can't even spell. I'd be struggling. Hey, Siri, spell righteousness for me. I struggle with that thing. There's a lot of words that Siri be helping me out with, so I'm grateful for that. Um, so righteousness, for, for those that don't know the word, righteousness, I'm going to put it as simple as this. It's the path of righteousness. It's a decision that you said, I'm going to walk right. It's as simple as that. Come on, we're going to level up this season, y'all. We're going to level up. It's a decision that we've made, and we said, we're just going to walk right. But how do you walk right? The first thing is to choose the path. Solomon is saying, he said, mark out a straight path. Mark it out, actually. Say, you know what? I'm not going to go this way. I'm not going to go left. Mm, I'm not going to turn there. Mm, no U-turns there. That's marking out the path. We mark out the path. Um, here's what I'm reading here. So do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. This is a translation, right? It says, avoid it. Don't even travel on it. Some of us are walking through life, and we're walking down the right path, and you're like, you know what? I'll go drinking. I, I'm not going to get drunk, but I'll go drinking because my friends are going drinking. And he's saying here, don't, don't even step foot there. Don't even, I, don't, don't, even step, don't even travel down that road. Turn from it. Turn from it. The only way you're able to turn from it is when you have a GPS, when you have marked out the path, you're able to realize, like, mm, that turn is not on the GPS right now. I don't have that listed as an option for me to take that turn. Here's what's happening right now for a lot of us. A lot of us, we are like a ship without a sail. Wherever the wind blows is where we're going to pull up. A wind blow me over here, so I, I guess we're over here. Wind blow, oh, where else? Oh, are we going over here? Okay, the wind blow. But, but, but when you have that cell, when you have a path, when you have the decision, when you said, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. This is us marking out a path. And here's the thing about, it says this, it says, for the wicked people said they cannot even sleep, Right? They can't even sleep. They're robbed of their slumber, right? And they eat bread with the wickedness and they drink wine with the violence. They're messy all over the place. Today, I'm, I'm about to tell someone right now, I, I know your life looks like a mess and you've heard this before, but today we're going to turn it into a message. Today, we're going to turn things around. Your life may be full of dirt, but I'm telling you, the dirt that comes on the path of righteousness is a different type of dirt. The weight that comes on this path, the yoke, the people that you are attached to, the people that you have decided to associate yourself with, we carry and we share the burden. Jesus said, take on my yoke. Actually, he said, it's easy. It's easy. And so... Uh, I remember when I was a kid, and I, you know, I, I, you know, I lie about anything. Like I lie about anything. Like I, I can smell my mom cooking, and that thing smells so nasty, and my stomach is boiling because I know I'm hungry, but I ain't got no money because I'm a kid. So my mom says, "Hey, um, P, you hungry? No. I'm sweating just like this. I have this thing where my nose, my nose is always sweating. Um, you hungry? No." Stomach is boiling. My, I, I mean, so much pain. I'm about to call 911 on myself. Like, I'm so hungry, and I'm lying about it. But here's the thing about when you lie. When you lie, uh, when you're living crooked, when you're walking down the path of darkness, you got to almost keep track. You got to keep track. Imagine if you're walking in a dark room. You're dark. You feel something right here, right? You almost got to keep track of everything that was happening. You can't even focus. You can't even focus on what's ahead because you're focusing on everything that you stumbled over, everything that you stumbled. And what happens to me is when I was a kid, I remember having to remember the last lies. Yeah, some of y'all are like, oh, man, that's crazy. Right now, I got a whole list of the lies right here. 
it, it's all tied up in a vote because you don't want people to see your lies. And what I'm telling you is one of my old mentors used to say this all the time. Here's something about the truth. And when you confess, confession, I get it, is bad for your reputation, but it's good for your soul. Amen. It's good for your soul. I get it. People are going to look at you. They're going to say, wow, man, he did what? She did what? She, oh, my gosh. Ew, that's gross. I can't believe she did that. Yeah, but you know what? You can sleep in peace without rest because you know that you have confessed and you have received the truth and now you have peace. This is what Jesus, this is what Solomon is wanting for us. And today I have an opportunity where I'm going to share with you guys what the Lord has given to me and unpacked from this passage here. So I even want to take a moment and right now I'm going to stop and say, do you ever feel restless? Do you ever feel like you go to sleep at night and you're just wrestling things? You're fighting things. You can't even rest. And which is ironic because if you're walking in the path of righteousness, David said it best in Psalms 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down, right? He makes me. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He makes me lie down, right? He makes me lie down. He does all this for his name's sake. When you're walking in the name of Jesus, when you're declaring the truth, you just know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know that I'm the head, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not the tail, I'm above, I'm beneath, I'm a child of God. And it doesn't matter what comes my way, I am walking on the right path. And because of that, the Lord is my shepherd, he leads me, he guides me beside still water. Here's the thing about when you're guided behind still water. Water. You ever go up to like a little creek, a little thing? Like I'm, I'm kind of afraid of creeks, right? Because, you know, I got, you know, family like they're from the Midwest and I see creeks and I watch a lot of forensic files and I be seeing what they, I be seeing what these serial killers be doing with creeks. So when I see a creek, I was like, no, it's Satan. Nope, I'm not. But anytime I feel bold enough to go to like a little tiny little, little thing, little pastures, and I was like, wow, look how still the water is. Here's the thing about when the water is still, the mud stays down, the dirt stays down. The dirt stays down. The dirt stays down. And a lot of us are walking through life and all the dirt keeps coming up. All your past keeps coming up because it's, it's getting muddy. That's what the Bible talks about, how the wicked, right? Matter of fact, we're going to jump down there in a little bit because I want to actually give a moment where we realize that Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Oh, I got a word for somebody today. I got a word for someone today. No, no, we're going to jump ahead. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, like some of you guys got the old school Bible, you got like you're licking the finger and everything and it's getting sticky and you're ripping it and the other rooms say, hey Siri, take me into the Bible app, Isaiah 57, right? Uh, okay, Isaiah 57, it says, verse 20, but those who still reject me, so this is God talking to the people of Israel, his chosen people. He was very frustrated with them because they were worshiping false idols. They were worshiping idols. And let me actually just take the word idol out real quick and they're saying they were worshiping anything that was not God. So they were worshiping, let's say, the house or their spouse or their cars, items. They were worshiping things. And God got really frustrated. And he wanted to give them an opportunity to repent. That's the character of our God. He wanted to give them an opportunity to repent. So he came to them, said, Isaiah, tell my people this. But he said this in verse 20. He said, but those who still reject me are like the restless sea, which is never still, but continually churns up the mud and dirt, like terms like boiling, like, like bubbling, like tossing, like you're messy, right? Because you're going down the wrong path, so you're constantly wrestling, constantly fighting, and the mud and the dirt just won't settle. It just won't leave you alone. It keeps coming up. And we're wondering why, yeah, all of our mess, all of our past, everything that we left behind, we're wondering why it keeps coming up to the top. Because you don't know the truth yet. Because when you know the truth, when you confess the truth, when you tell the truth, you're made free. That's what the Bible says. When you know the truth, you are set free. So even when the dirt, even when your past comes up, matter of fact, you can't. It's like somebody going to my wife and saying like, hey, did you know his girlfriend that he had back? In? And she could actually pause and actually finish the story for them. That's the beauty of the truth. It has no value when someone comes to me and brings up my dirt because I'm walking in truth. I'm walking in righteousness. I told my wife all my past. She knows everything about me. So no one can come for me. When you know the truth, when you confess the truth, when you tell the truth, you're made free. You're made whole. And right now, today, 
There's going to be a time today where some of you, even right now, even at the sound of this, you're getting, you're, like, you're getting revelation right now. And what revelation means is that right now you're letting go of all the things. You're letting go of all the, all the chains, all the bondage. Everything that was on you is falling off of you right now. And you're being set free. And when you walk in freedom, when you walk in, in, in liberty, it don't matter what your bank account looks like. It don't matter if they took your car, if they took your tooth, if they took your dog, someone kick your cat. It doesn't matter. When you're walking in freedom and peace, you know the truth. You can rest. You can rest. Verse 21 in Isaiah, God says, there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. There's no peace. He was talking to the people that refused to turn, to turn off the path that he told them, don't go down. That's why Solomon is saying, mark out a straight path. Keep your feet from following evil. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. So we already know the truth. We already know the way. So the way that we want to choose is the way of God. So when he's saying mark out a straight path, again, remember how I said at the top, this is not entertainment. You want to receive revelation because if you receive revelation, then you could apply this and you could actually look at your life and say, these are the markings I'm going to put in my life. These are the guardrails. These are the things that I'm going to say, I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to go left. I'm not going to go right. That's why I'm encouraging you to receive revelation today. Jesus said, come to me. Yeah, all you who are weary, carrying heavy burdens, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. Yoke, like I said earlier, it, it, it's it's. It's an association. It's an attachment. It's a, it's a covenant. It's a connection. It, it's, a, it's something that is fixed. Hitch. Matter of fact, unite. When he says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, Jesus says. He said, because I am humble and I am gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. He says, for my yoke is easy to bear. It's easy to bear. A lot of us are walking through life, and we have attached ourselves. We've yoked, associated, attached, connect, fix, hitch, unite, whatever you want to call it, to other people, and we become unequally yoked. And we're carrying other people's burdens, right? You're walking through life, and you feel heavy because someone who won't receive the truth, who won't repent, and you're attached to them, and it's dragging you down, and it's holding you down. And Jesus is saying... Put those burdens on me. Think about it. Jesus is saying, if you're carrying heavy burdens, even if they're not yours, put them on me and take on my yoke. Because my yoke is easy. And here's why his yoke is easy. There is nothing that you can do to, first of all, to have deserved it. And since Jesus' yoke is so easy, it's so light, when you are attached to him, all you got to do is rest. That's all you got to do is rest. That's the yoke that Jesus gives us. He says, so take on my yoke. He said, it's easy. And the burden I give you is light. The burden I give you is light. But we must decide today, church. Family, we must decide today. I don't know where you're watching this right now. I don't know if you're watching this from home. You might be watching this in real time or you're watching this a year later. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, someone's watching this in the car in your living room right now. And I'm telling you to decide today to straighten your path and follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. God loves us so much that he gave us the free will to love him back. He could have just been this religious God and said, I'm going to make you love me. Some of y'all here right now, you brought a girl to church and you, and you forcing her to, to brunch and breakfast. I'm going to make her love me. I know she likes chocolate chip pancakes, so I'm going to do just that. And I'm telling you, that, that don't work. It's just a trap, girl. You better get out of there. It's a trap. You ever seen that movie Get Out? I'm telling you right now. Chocolate chip pancakes aren't that good. I, I, I lied. They're actually really great. That's the difference from religion and relationship. God gave us the freedom, right? We've heard this all the time. We always say this is it's a relationship. It's not religion, right? But we don't want to use it as an excuse. We don't want to use it as an excuse to say this is why you can't judge me. This is why you can't talk to me. This way. Because this is not a religion. God knows my heart. This is a relationship. And because I got a relationship with God... I can do whatever I want to do, and he knows me. There's a story that um, 
My wife was sharing me about on TikTok, there's a lady that she's, um, she's saved and she's in ministry. And she said God told her it's okay to just sleep with her boyfriend. I know this is a tight subject and this is a subject that a lot of people don't talk. But I'm telling she this is the relationship that she has with God. She said, God told me it's okay to sleep with my boyfriend. And I'm like, I don't know what God you serve, but that God, I want him far away from me. Because that is what's happening in the end days. There are people that are acting as if they are God. There are people that they sound just like it, right? It's the crooked speech that we talked about, but their hearts are far from God. It's not even revelation from the Lord. And it's the path of darkness. It's the path of darkness. Jesus said, take on my yoke, for it is easy. Proverbs 4, verse 18, it says, the path of the righteous is like a morning sun shining ever bright till the full light of day. That's the, that's the thing about when you're walking in truth and you're walking in peace. Like, you don't have to be focusing on all these other things. You can see clearly now the rain is gone, right? That's what it is. The next verse, verse 19, it says, but the way of the wicked is like, a, a, is like deep darkness. They don't even know what makes them stumble. We receiving that? They don't even know why they're stumbling. We're walking through life and we're tripping over all types of things. If you had the light, you'd be able to see. If the light was part of your decision that you said, you know what, I'm going to make out a path. And the path that I'm going to do, the first thing is going to be, I'm going to choose the way. Choose today the way. The way is Jesus. I'm going to choose the truth. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. The, the, the word of God is a light unto our path. It's a light to our path. So you're able to see right now if the lights went out, we would all be looking for our flashlight because we would be stumbling all through darkness. And we're going down a path of darkness, stumbling, and you're stumbling and you're so covered in darkness and you don't even know what's causing it. And that's what he's talking about here in that same, same chapter. So I want to ask somebody today, what path are you on? The path of righteousness or the other path? We're walking through life and we say, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. It's a phrase that a lot of us use. I'm just going to do my own thing. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible says, don't depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Lean not on your own understanding. So that's actually one of my favorite verses right there, Proverbs 3, verse 5. So um, back in the days, I used to always put it on everything because it's the truth. I, I, I can't trust my own understanding. The way I see it is not the way God sees it. God said, my ways aren't even your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So whatever way you think, God's saying, I don't have either of those like you. My ways aren't yours, and my thoughts are higher than yours. So if you think I could do this, God is saying, I can do something that your brain can't even comprehend. So I'm telling you today, get on the right path. Choose the way. I remember when I remember when I was coming out of high school and I was going to Bible college and uh, it was in Columbus, Ohio. I was living in West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, that's where I grew up and I went to Ohio and I, it, it felt really good. Uh, I stayed one semester there. I met a lot of people. I met Dan and Lee there. Um, I got a job there. I was playing on a worship team. I mean, I met Dan and Lee and a bunch of other girls too. But it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you about that later. Um, I confess. So my my soul is good. All right. Um, <laughs> but I remember the summer going back to West Palm Beach, Florida, and God told me, he says, you're not going back. And I was frustrated because I'm like, how? This doesn't make sense. I have a whole semester paid off waiting for me. I just met this girl, like, I met this girl there, my high school girlfriend, she's coming up too, so that's going to be complicated. I get that, but I got a job waiting for me. I got a position waiting for me on the worship team. And I said, you know what? Two days later, I said, you know what, God? I pick your plan. I stayed. I stayed. I stayed. And what I'm telling you is I stayed and God put me into full-time ministry. Danny Lee moved down. We got married. We started a family. We had kids. Things got tough. Things got tough. I got frustrated. You know, I wanted out. I remember wanting out. Uh, I remember wanting out of the church that I was at. This was a church that launched us. This is where I, 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 I received my calling. And I remember one time sending out my resume. We, we were married for like two years. And I sent out my resume to like a dozen churches. And I just wanted out. 
I just wanted out. And I just frustrated. Why? Because I allowed, it, I allowed a, lot, a lot of crooked speech and people to just talk into my life and say things. And it, it, it caused me to divert. It caused me to get sidetracked. And so I was sidetracked. And I started thinking, yeah, you know what? Maybe I do need to leave this church. Started putting out resumes. And one day, God said, you do that, I'm going to do what I did to Jonah to you. And I thought of, what? Jonah, Jonah, what? So I went and looked up the story of Jonah. I said, oh, you mean Jonah that, that, you know, that, 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 that stayed three nights, you know, and three days in at the, at the uh, fish inn. Okay, that Jonah. Yeah, no, 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 no. I went back and read it. And this story of Jonah, family, it, it, this story was about following the will of God. It was about understanding the character of God. It was about understanding to love your enemies. Long story short, God said to Jonah, he said, get up and go. That's the direction, right? That's the first thing. I don't know what God is telling you right now in your life that you're not listening to. But the first thing, God says simple words. And I, I get it. You don't understand go where. You don't understand what's going to happen. But God is giving you simple words sometimes. And sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's stop. Sometimes it's like don't go back. In this case, it was get up and go. Long story short, I'm going to try to make it short. Um, he, God said go to these people and tell them a message. Tell them I'm going to destroy them um, if they don't stop living wicked. You know what I mean? Like evil, like, like, like morally wrong. Jonah went the opposite direction. He disagreed with God. He disagreed with God, and he went the opposite direction. God sent a storm after him. I don't know if there's a storm in your life right now. I don't know if everything is upside down. I don't know if you feel like your ship is about to sink. There's winds, there's water, there's floods. I don't know if there's a storm, but could, could, could it be? You're out of the will of God. There's a song that I grew up singing. It used to say, it said, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. That's where you're safe. We talked about that earlier where he said, mark out a safe path. He's gonna say, safe path doesn't mean like, ooh, I'm going to play it safe. Safe path means choose Jesus. Choose the right path because you're safe. God sent a storm after Jonah. Powerful winds came, violent storm, all that stuff. It threatened the ship. Everybody was scared for their lives. Jonah fell asleep on the bottom. The captain was like, man, who's, who's bringing this, 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 this storm here? They all found out. They all pointed fingers towards Jonah. And what happened was they realized Jonah was the one that brought the, sh- the, 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 the storm on the ship, the storm to them. I don't know if you're Jonah. I don't know if there's a Jonah in your circle. You allowed somebody into your boat. You allowed somebody into your life. Someone's in that living room, that bedroom right now. Someone's in that car with you right now, and they shouldn't be in that car. And you're like, man, all my money keeps going away. I keep finding accidents. Why am I so broke? How come I, everything that I touch isn't going right? You got to ask yourself, first of all, who's on your boat? Is it you? Is it the person that's on that boat that God is sending a storm after them? But here's what happened. Here's what I need everybody to understand. Jonah got off track. We get off course. We walk down a path we shouldn't walk down. We encounter people. We get into a boat. There's a storm. And you're like, God, why? Well, go back a year or two. What did he tell you to do a year ago? Go back last year and ask yourself, what was the last thing God told me to do? And I decided to go the opposite direction. This is the word of God. This is not my word, y'all, so don't stone me, please. I got I to eat lunch after this. I'm hungry, you know? So, so uh, long story short, <laughs> I'm still saying that. They all bowed down and worshiped God. Here's the thing. God is at the beginning. God is at the end. He's the author. He's the finisher. He knows the story. And, and the Bible says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It doesn't matter what your situation looked like. And here's what happened. Jonah thought the story was over. And God said, I'm still going to get the glory. Everybody on that boat was worshiping false idols. And every single one of them bowed down and said, this guy serves a powerful God. You can't get too far from God. It doesn't matter how far you think you got sidetracked. Maybe there is a storm coming after you. Maybe your situation is messed up right now. That doesn't surprise the Lord. He writes the story. You're going to come back. And not only are you going to come back, matter of fact, thank you for getting sidetracked because I'm going to save all them too. Thank you for getting sidetracked. They're getting saved. 
They were all in awe of the Lord's great power. Every single person, every knee bowed. But this wouldn't have happened if Jonah went off course like this. God is telling us to do stuff, and we're living dirt. We're living wickedly. I know stories of people who, who lie on their taxes and says, Lord, bless my finances. What? I, I, I know people who, I, I know someone who, who got pulled over by a cop and lied and said that they're going to their grandmother's funeral and their grandma's not even dead. And said, Lord, can you give us traveling mercies? That ain't right. God fights for the righteous. Do you have prayers right now that he's not responding to because we know that the praise of the righteous come on who knows the word the praise of the righteous are heard and those prevail we have to be down the right path we have to be down the right path so choose the way today other thing that I want to tell you is remain steady remain 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 when he's saying stay on the safe path stay Remain. For those of you who have animals, you know when you're training, you say, stay, no, stop, squirrel. You know, uh, my, my two-year-old daughter, her favorite movie right now is the movie Up. We watched it 12 times in the last 36 hours. And the dog's on there, right? They're well-trained. But they get sidetracked by one word. One word derails them. You say squirrel, <laughs> and they get derailed. What's that one word for you right now in your life? What are the few things that you have to find in your life, in your situation, that you have to say, you know what? These are trigger words, and I'm going to put them on. I'm going to mark it out and say, I will not allow these words to trigger me anymore. That argument that you get into with your spouse, with, like with your kids, with your grandparents, with your coworkers, there are people in your life that are set up to just trigger you. And I'm telling you right now to mark out a path and say, I will not be shaken. I'm going to remain and stay steady. I will not be sidetracked. Si so sidetracked, it's, it's, a, it's a position, right? It's, a, it's even a condition sometimes. Like uh, um, Webster says, it's a secondary important Right? It's a secondary importance to which the main thing is. So, for example, train tracks. They have tracks and they have side tracks. And God is saying that uh, this is the main track. This is the path that I'm telling you. This is the path. And a lot of us now are walking through life and we've made him the secondary track. This might have been a side track for someone today. Someone watching this right now on YouTube and you stumbled upon this because you was on YouTube, you was on your feed, and this was your sidetrack. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get off of this track. The moment you walked into here today, all signs lead to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. When we're, when we're sidetracked, it's to move from the main thing. It's to change. It's to turn aside. It's to be averted. It's to even be amused. Like, oh, look at that butterfly. Right? Oh, it, it, it's, it, that's, oh, it's to be entertained. Yesterday, I went to the movies with my family, and we went to go watch the Minions. And my two-year-old, she was frustrated after about 20 minutes. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go down to the car, and I'm going to grab the stroller. I went and grabbed the stroller, and I'm walking in with the stroller in the mall. And I said, oh, I've never seen that shoe store before. Is it the Jordans? Oh, they got the Yeezys, too sidetrack I'm walking in and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look I'm just gonna look I'm just gonna look I don't really like the minions anyway you know like what are they saying anyway I don't know what they're saying right Jesus you know uh, so I'm like I'm looking at these joints I said okay I'm not gonna touch okay I'm gonna touch them I'm not gonna bite them touch them looking at them and 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 like you know how you do like all this and you're looking under it and you and you know how you try and act like you want to look at the price but you don't want them to know that you're looking at the price so you look at so you do a full 360 you're like, oh, yeah, these, yeah these, shoes, these shoes are cool. Yeah, $600? Oh, yeah, these shoes are cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, how about these ones over here? And I'm, I'm looking for the price, and I know it's under, but I don't want them to think that I don't want to, that I want to look at the price. So I go around 360, look at the bottom. Oh, wow, Jesus. Look at the top. I'm like, oh, just 500 Oh, that's nothing. 
That's not, <laughs> you guys laughing hard. <laughs> All right. So I got sidetracked. Long story short, sidetrack. Other words for sidetrack is to have to rebudget, rechannel. Other words, it's to redirect. What's happening right now in this generation, in this time, we're sidetracked in our feet. Everything that we look at, everything, I mean, I could do one search on my, on my Google now, and then I go to IG, and the next you notice, it's right there. And I can't stay focused and sidetracked. We're, we're having to rebudget our lives, redirect our lives, change it, rechannel our lives today. And that's why Solomon is saying, mark it out. Make it straight. F fix your feet. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from evil. So I want to say remain steady stay be steadfast in all your ways don't turn left don't turn right the bible says be still god said be still and know that i am god be still stay stay sometimes even count to three say uh, stay stay say um call out the name of jesus sometimes stand on the word and the word is simple the word is simple it's 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 talking about self-control it's talking about peace uh, christ the solid rock i stand i love how we've been talking about that um um when everything around me is shaken I love that. He said, Christ is my firm foundation. I'm like, whoa, I love those words. It doesn't matter what's moving to your left, to your right. I'm going to remain steady and I won't get sidetracked. I don't care if that girl calls you in the middle of the night. I don't care if your homeboy says, hey, bro, I got this, 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 this six pack. We're going to go drink. Mark out the path and say, no, I'm not doing this. This all does not align with the path of righteousness. Remain, remain steady. Jesus said, I am the vine, remain in me. Remain in me. Even when it doesn't make sense. We were just singing that earlier. God, uh, God is the gardener. And Jesus said, like, he's cutting the branches. He's cutting people out of your lives. Anything that doesn't produce fruit, God is cutting. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting. Remain steady and stay and receive it. Receive it. He said he's also pruning the branches that do bear fruit. And there's people in your life right now that are bearing fruit. And Jesus was talking about there's um, let it grow because the weeds, are, they're, they're, they're going to grow, right? Let all of it grow with the wheat. And when it's time, when it's season, we're going to prune. And in your life right now, there are people that are getting cut. And that's okay. They don't line up with the path of righteousness. They don't line up with the path that Jesus has called you to go down. Psalms 1, uh, it says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. Verse 2, it says, but they delight. Ooh, they de delight in the law of the Lord. The law is not hard to follow because I to take delight in following the Lord. I have a relationship with him. So if he asks me to go this way, go that way, I'm going to do it. It's not a rule. I want to do it. Because I know he is leading me in the path of righteousness. And it's all for his name's sake. I get it. I get it. Sometimes God is asking us to do some, like certain things, and we're like, this doesn't make sense. But if you go in the name of Jesus, he's doing it for his name's sake. Even if it doesn't make sense, why would he leave you astray? He said he'll never leave you. No one forsake you. This is the word of God. But the only way to identify this type of living is when you're walking the right path. The walk in the right path. Verse 3, it says, uh, uh, the, the righteous is saying, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither. Come on, we're talking about living the right life now, right? They never wither, and all they do, they prosper in all they do. They prosper. They prosper in all they do. But, verse 4, not the wicked. Ooh. They are like worthless shafts scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. And here's my favorite verse. Verse 6 right here. Verse 6 right here. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. I remember God told me, and I want to invite everyone to stand. Uh, I was praying one time and um, I was feeling super heavy, like spiritually heavy. Just he I woke up and I was just, man, just God, there's just so much going on right now. I'm just tired. I'm 
tired. I don't know if anyone could agree when you wake up and you're just restless. You feel like you're running. You're tired. You're just tired. And I got on my knees and I started asking God. I said, Lord, what's happening? Why are we here? What are we doing? What do I need to do? And I heard God say this to me. He says, he says, you know. He says, you know. You see, he's already revealed to me the truth, the way, the life. I got sidetracked. I got derailed. And I'm like, God, what's going on? And God is saying, you know. And he said, can you trust me? And this is the word for somebody. Can you trust me? You have always trusted me. And now is not the time to let go. Just hold on. You are on my mind and in my thoughts, says the Lord. This is what God told me. And this is for someone today. You are on my mind and in my thoughts. God is thinking about you. And he has not stopped thinking about you. Someone right now is listening to this and you're thinking like, God doesn't even think about me. And I'm telling God is saying, you are on my mind. He says, I have you and I have called you to this. This path of righteousness that we're talking about, I have called you to this. You're called to walk in. He says, just hold on and don't let go. You know, you know. So we're going to continue. We won't get sidetracked. We're going to endure. We're going to persist. We're going to stand. We're going to remain steady. We're going to remain steady. We won't look to the left. We won't look to the right. And the last one is we're going to keep from evil. We're going to keep from evil. Ephesians 6, Eddie preached on this last week and talked about um, protecting your heart with the breastplate of righteousness, covering your heart with living right. And Ephesians 6, I'm going to jump down to verse 14. It says, stand your ground, put on the belt of truth. Ooh, wrap yourself with the truth, y'all. Put it around your belt. You tell the truth, you're going to keep your, be- you're going to keep your pants up. <laughs> the body armor of God's righteousness. In verse 15, it says, and for your shoes... Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Fully prepared. That's fully prepared. So us, we're walking around. We got the salvation on, right? We got the truth belt. We got the righteous. And he's saying, you want to be fully prepared? Walk in peace. Walk in peace. Walk that straight path. Don't get sidetracked. Stay on the safe path. And you will be fully prepared. The good news, the good news is that we're saved. I have good news to tell someone that God has fought for us. Jesus has died for us and we're saved. I have good news for somebody that we are saved by grace. And that because he lives, we live. That's good news. So because of that, we walk in peace. We walk in freedom. You're walking in liberty right now. Come on, I need somebody to just shake it off. You're shaking it off. Everything that's been holding you down, hold the weight, hold the burden. God is saying, give it to me and take my yoke. And right now, burdens are being lifted right now. I can feel it. I can see it. Someone just needs to take a deep breath right now. Deep breath in the Lord that you've taken on his yoke. And it is easy. It is light. And you're finding rest right now. Tonight, some of you are going to sleep really well for the very first time in years in the name of Jesus. Because today is going to be the day that you're saying, I'm going to walk the straight path. And I'm no longer getting sidetracked. And I'm keeping my feet from evil. And I'm going to rest in Jesus' name. This is how we level up. (sighs) Philippians 4. Then you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Anybody need peace today? Anybody needs rest today for the first time? Thank you, Lord. God has a plan even when we get off course. Jonah prayed and he repent. And at the end, God said to him, the very same thing God said to him at the beginning. He said, go, get up, and go. What this means, this is, a, this, this is God's character. It doesn't matter how much Jonah got off course. God said to him at the beginning, get up and go. He got off course. 
He got back on track. And God picked up exactly where he left off. Get up and go. And right now, somebody is listening to me right now, and you feel like God is done with you. And I'm telling you, he's just getting started. If you can just sacrifice your life right now, if you could just give yourself to his unfailing love, he's going to pick up exactly where he said. He loves you. And he said, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. And that's what I'm here to tell somebody today is that you've been struggling, you've been running, and the fight is over. You get to rest now. And God is saying the same thing that he said. He's saying, come. He's saying, come. He's, 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 he's thinking about us all the time. Yeah. This is it. But we got to get on track. What's the last word that God gave to you that you disobeyed and that you haven't listened to? So we say, choose the way, which is Jesus. We're saying, stay, remain steady. Stand on the truth. And keep your feet from following evil. Because there are two roads in this life, one that leads to destruction and ones that lead to the life. Jesus said, oh, oh, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. So we choose the way. We choose the truth. We remain and stand on the word. And we choose life, which is the road that leads to Jesus. And he says, no one can come to the Father except through me. I've asked Deacon Marvin to come up here. Matter of fact, you can just stand right here, Marvin. And I want to take a moment and give an opportunity to some people to understand that today is a day we're marking out the path, a straight path. And I'm here to tell you that all signs lead to Jesus. It leads to the altar. It leads to the way. It leads to the truth, and it leads to the life. And we all know signs, so this is, so take a look at this. This, this, this right here is road signs. When we're driving, we see those, right? We see all those type of pictures. We see uh, the freeway, the highway. We see stop signs. And what's next after that, Marv? So come over and let me see what you got. Okay, this, this right here is a sign for some people. You're standing at that crosswalk, <laughs> and God is telling you, don't go there. No U-turns. Only one way. Only one way. Stop. Some people thought about walking out today and you was going to go back to drugs and you was going to go back to alcohol. And I'm here to tell you that all signs right now is telling you the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is telling you right now to stop. He's telling you right now to stop. Matter of fact, you know why you need to stop? Because there's other people. There's other people in your circle right now that needs to get saved. And there's other people that are getting hurt because you're not stopping. You're not stopping. And, ooh, I love this one right here. What I love about the yield, the yield is some of us right now in this season, you just need to get on your knees and bow down and say, God, I surrender. I stop. I'm going to yield to your word. I'm yielding right now. All signs. This is a sign for somebody. You've been on that path. You've been running too long and you're restless. And there's an exit right here. Matter of fact, you jumped off this exit right here on Baker Street. This was an accident. Someone stopped on this video right now on YouTube. And I'm telling you, exit here. Exit here. Exit here. Uh, do not enter. Do not enter. Who needs this sign? Is this a sign for somebody? I mean, there's signs for everybody. This is a sign for someone saying, hey, don't go down that road. Don't turn here. Don't go down the road. Uh, oh, and for the stubborn people, this is, I'm going to let this soak in. This is for all the stubborn people. This is one of how many words can we get on one sign? Stop. This is the exit. People are leaving this path. People have realized that the path of darkness does not lead to life. And people are actually coming out of there. This is a sign saying, stop, don't enter. There's only one way. There's only one way. It's only one way. It's only one way. And Jesus said there's two roads. One that leads to destruction and there's a narrow one. And if you find that bridge, this is the bridge today. This sanctuary church, this, this video that you're watching right now, this is a bridge. It's narrow, but it leads to life. We're not turning back. Is this a sign for somebody? Is this for somebody today? We're not turning back. We're not turning back. We're not turning back. So let me do this. Let me do this. Casey, let me get you up here. Give him that not turning back sign. Come stand right here, buddy. Casey, come stand right here. Come, yep, come stand right here. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. That's perfect. Andy, let me get you. Eddie, come on, let me get you. Yep. Yep. What's that next one? 
Enter here. Eddie, we'll get you right here. This is a sign for somebody. Enter here. Enter here. And there's only one way. Straight up. That's the path. This is the path. This is what God is saying for us right now. And so with every eyes closed, with every eyes closed, nobody looking around. Marvin, you can hold that one-way sign. With nobody looking around, I have a prayer that I want to give out. And I want to have you repeat after me because there's people in here that needs to turn from the path that they've been on. And this is your chance. This is your opportunity. If you're joining us online, if you're watching this uh, sometime down the road, this message is from you. With eyes closed, with hands lifted high, repeat after me. We say, Jesus, I know you are the way, the truth, and the life. I see the signs. I see what you did for me. And I say thank you. From this moment forward, I repent and I turn away from the path of darkness. And I am choosing to follow you forever and ever and ever and ever in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I want to take a moment. If there are people here that you said that prayer for the very first time, if you feel in your heart right now, if you feel like peace has taken over your heart, has taken over your thoughts, you feel rested. If you feel like all your burdens has been lifted and today you're making that decision, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'd love to meet you here, here at this altar. If there's anyone that did, said that prayer for the first time, I'd love to see. Is there a hand? I'd love to see your hands. We'd love to connect with you. Is there anyone? Is there anybody that said that prayer for the first time? Said that prayer for the first time. If you said that prayer, join me right here. I'd love to meet you and connect with you. Ask your neighbor. Ask somebody. Ask someone that's sitting, standing next to you if they said that prayer. Ask them if they need you to go with them. If there's anybody. Amen. Amen. Come here, bro. So tell me your name. One. One. Today's going to be a new day for you, man. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. Take a moment. So look at all these people here. This is the family. This... This path, this, this path that you're taking, we're all on it. And there's other people that they've had their feet marking out the trails for you. And today's going to be a day you won't be sidetracked, you won't be derailed. If there's anyone else that wants to join them, today's the day. Amen. Amen. Church, let's stretch, let's stretch our hands out. Stretch our hands out. Father, we just thank you for our brother. We thank you for our brother right now, God, that has made the decision, God, to follow you, Jesus. Even those that are watching online right now, that is declaring that they're going to take the safe path in your name and the path of righteousness, Lord, that today marks the day that their feet is starting this new path of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for all those that you've brought before us, Lord. We thank you, God, that your spirit is leading and guiding our brother right now. That this day forward, that he starts his new path in the name of Jesus. Amen.